Hello, everybody. I'm Heidi Dean, social media coach for actors and a backstage expert. And I'm so excited to be back here, this time talking about YouTube tips for actors. And um, what better place to talk about YouTube tips for actors than right here on YouTube, right? So if you guys have joined me, I think the past four lives that I've done the past uh, month or so, then you know I am going to be teaching you some actionable things, actionable tips that you can do the minute we're done here today, okay? So if you have a pen or paper, make sure you have it near you because you're gonna wanna take notes. Or if you can't take notes, don't worry. Um, this, if the internet gods are with us, will be on Backstage's channel when we're done. Okay, awesome. Let me know if you guys can hear me or see me. Let me know where you're joining me from. Perfect. And I've already seen in the chat, we have people that have established YouTube channels. We have people that want to learn how to set up a YouTube channel. So I'm going to help all of you today. If you have an established channel, stick with me because we're going to get to those views and subscribers later on. And um, I will be doing Q&A at the end. Okay. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about the three types of YouTube channels that an actor might create. Okay. Then I'm going to show you how to make that channel look great so that you actually get more views, more subscribers coming back over and over and over again. Sound good? Okay. Hey, Heidi, back again. Hey, Katie Toon. Awesome. I've seen you on Instagram. I've seen you all around. You're using the same picture. Good job. Uh, hey, Steve. Hey, Kim. Hey, Abigail. Thank you so much for joining me, guys. Awesome. Awesome. Today's going to be really great. Okay. So keep them coming. Keep them coming. Let's see. Baltimore, Houston. Perfect. Okay. So before we talk about making your channel look amazing, before we talk about getting more subscribers, we first must decide what is the purpose of your YouTube channel? Why doesn't it exist? Okay. This is really, really important guys, because there's so many of you guys, um, there's so many people out there telling actors, you need to create content right now, especially with what's going on in the world. You should be creating a YouTube channel, right? Well, the truth is not every actor is a content creator and you should be totally cool with that. Okay. You actually have different options for being on YouTube and we're going to discuss them today. So usually for actors, there's three different reasons they might be on YouTube. And I put them right here for you guys so you can see them the whole time. And the reason why is they're going to be tips from today that apply to one but might not apply to the other. So at least you'll be able to see them here today. So the first reason why, a, why an actor may have a YouTube channel is it might be a home right here. It might be a home for all your videos. And I'd say for about 90% of actors, this is probably the why for their channel right? Um, you might need a place to house your reel. You might need a place to occasionally upload a self tape, of course, unlisted or, you know, privacy protected, uh, password protected. Um, and you might also be uploading a lot of performance clips, right? If you're a musical theater actor. Okay. For most actors, that may be why you have your channel. And that's great. You must, might also include any press or interviews you've done on your channel. This is you if you're not really actually creating content. Got it? Okay. But even if that's you, you got to make sure it looks awesome because people are looking you up for your career. So I'm going to give you tips today if that's you. Now, the second reason an actor may have a YouTube channel is you're actually a content creator. And I know we're all content creators. If we're posting on social media, we're creating things. But no, I mean, you are creating content. Maybe you have a web series. Maybe you create short films. Maybe you do sketch comedy. You are creating some, some type of entertainment um, for a specific audience. Okay, so that's the second reason someone may have a YouTube channel. And we'll, I'll give you some tips today if that's you. Now, the third reason an actor may have a YouTube channel is th that actually may help you build your audience and boost your brand as an actor is a vlog, a vlog style channel. And that's vlog with a V, V-L-O-G. And I know a couple people on here. I, I've seen one of your channels and you have a vlog style channel. Um, a vlog is exactly what it sounds like. It is a blog <laughs> where the content is video. It's actually what a lot of videos are on YouTube. Um, if you have seen my channel, I do social media for actors. And technically, I have an educational blog um, teaching social media to actors, and that's my audience. Okay. If you're planning to look at the camera and take us on your journey and you know inspire us or educate us, you have a vlog. Make sense, guys? Okay, cool. So those are really the three main categories that actors would have to set up their channel. So home base for your content, 
you're a creator. So you're creating that educational content, web series, sketch, uh, short films, whatever it may be, or you're vlogging. So let me know in the comments below, number one, if you even have a YouTube channel that you're using for your career and where you fit in. Just type home, type creator, or type vlog. And actually, I'm going to throw another one in there. If you just watch videos, so say you just, you know, watch videos online, you just join lives, you just comment on people's videos, just write watch videos if that's you. Okay. And if that's you, some of the things we're going to talk about today, it's actually very important that you optimize your channel as well, because you're going to be interacting with people that you want to know all the time. Okay. Can you be doing all three, Dia? Um, yes, but you have to know how to organize your channel if you're doing multiple things or it's confusing, okay? Um, if you're gonna be doing all three and sharing the same channel, your channel has to have the same audience, okay? And we could talk about that more in the Q&A. That was a really great, great question. So I see home and creator. Awesome. That is where you can put these together because obviously if you're creating content as an actor, that's building your brand, right? That's show what you're probably in that content and it's showing us how we might cast you um, and you would probably want it here. Okay. Um, all three creator, music covers and techie stuff. Perfect. Let me see. Perfect. I'm doing all three. Perfect. Great. So I'm going to keep moving. Okay. Um, whether you answered home creator, blogger, or even just watching videos. Um, the biggest mistake I see actors make when creating videos and content um, is they put them up on their YouTube channel without actually setting up their channel properly. That is like saying you're going to open a store and putting that little we're, we're open sign outside, right? And all you've done is put a couple products on the shelves, your videos, right? but you haven't swept the floor, you haven't painted the walls, you haven't even put a sign outside that tells us what the store is even about, okay? So that's what a lot of you guys are doing. You're trying to open out a store without actually setting up shop, right? And when someone finds this store, when they find your channel, they walk in and they're likely not, not gonna return, okay? So that's what we're gonna first do today. We're gonna clean up and we're gonna set up that shop. OK, and then we're going to talk about some ways to get people in the door, um, watching, responding, returning to that store over and over and over again. OK, tell me if that sounds exciting. Tell me if that if that is something you want to learn in the chat. I'm just going to have a sip of coffee. Oh, I was almost late because I had to make my coffee. because That is one thing I do not go live without coffee. <laughs> hey, Gina Ray, though. Yay. OK, I see. Yes. Awesome. Woohoo. Love it. Perfect. Okay, so the first thing you guys need to do, and we're starting super basic, right? <laughs> but first thing you need to do is you need to upload your channel icon, your profile photo, okay? It seems basic, but every time I go live, I look in the chat, and I'm actually seeing somebody now that I know is an actor. Um, I see lots of little eggs, purple, blue. You know, I'm seeing people without names. I'm seeing people without profile photos, right? It doesn't matter whether you're watching videos or you're creating them please upload the channel icon. It's so easy to do. Just go to customize channel um, on your channel. And then you're just going to hover over um, where the profile photo is. And there's a pencil. Just upload it there. And it's going to it's going to change it all across Google for you. Perfect, guys. OK, it seems so simple, but I can't tell, uh, tell you how many times I have someone comment on my YouTube video. And it's a really thoughtful comment. And they don't have a name. And they don't have a, a face to that name. So if you're using this right now to network, to be with other actors, um, then upload that profile photo. Basic, but so important. And you guys love my coffee mug. I know it's so awesome and it's so big. Yes, this coffee is making me awesome. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to some bigger concepts. Um, the next thing you guys need to do is you need to create your YouTube channel art. That is the sign outside your store. That on Backstage's channel, I think it is yellow and says Backstage, right? On my channel, actually, I'm about ready to redesign mine. So I have a black and white version of it here so you can see. That's my channel art, right? Channel art is great a great way to tell people what your channel's about, what you're about. And very important, if you are a creator or a vlog, tell us when to expect videos, right? And mine is not black and white. I'm just redesigning it, so <laughs> I printed it out real fast. But so when do we expect videos from you? If you have a web series, tell us, is it, is it every Monday? Is it every other Monday? Um, if you have a vlog, is it three times a week? Is it one time a week? For me, it's every Thursday, okay? Except yesterday because I was going live today. <laughs> I actually had subscribers call me out and say, where was my video? <laughs> so 
this is like the sign, the billboard for your channel. And if you have actually, if you're creating content, it's like the movie poster for your content, right? Now, I'm going to give you a little pro tip here, guys, because this is just like Facebook, the covers there or Twitter, the headers there, um, which are fairly easy to create if you have a tool like Canva.com, which I've talked about on the cleaning up your social media live I did. I'm sure Katie will drop that in there. Um, Canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. It's free. They have templates for all major headers. They have a template for the YouTube channel art, but it's a little problematic. Okay. And I'm going to show you why. And I brought my nice smelly markers that you guys loved last time. We got licorice today. Whew, I don't like licorice though. So, Whew, okay. <laughs> so can you guys see this? This is a template for channel art. Um, and I'm gonna break it down for you if it's a little bit hard to see, depending on the connection. So when we go and we create a header for Twitter, when we create a header for Facebook, it's gonna be about this size, right? Right here in the middle. We are just creating a header for desktop, which is a whole thing, and mobile and tablet. It just has to look good on those three things. But when we're creating YouTube channel art for YouTube, it also has to look good, it's very hard to draw this way, for TV, right? YouTube channels, we can watch them on a television. So that channel art actually has to look good on a television, okay? And that is why a lot of you guys even if you're just using it for your career, you up, you, you know, like upload some kind of picture, a screenshot from, from a, a gig you've done and your head's up here, your text is down here. And guess what? When you upload it, it looks like crap, right? <laughs> it does not look good. Um, here's the secret when you're making your YouTube channel art. If you go to Canva, they're going to give you a template and it's going to be this big. Make sure you keep all your text, any important faces, any important text, any important information in this text and logo safe uh, area in the middle, okay? Yeah, Candy says, I didn't even think about formatting for TV. Yep, yeah, and really um, the problem is, is you when you use the template, it is actually like you're formatting for TV because you're using the whole space, but then when you look at it on desktop and mobile, which is actually where most, most people watch YouTube, um, at least for now, uh, then then your your header looks bad there. And that's part of your first impression. So really just try to keep all your text in the center when you're using that template on Canva. Okay. Now, if you're brand new and don't have a channel yet, that might be a big concept, but <laughs> that will save you hours of back and forth of uploading and going, why does this look terrible? Why is my head cut off? Okay. So keep all of that in the center. Okay. Awesome. Someone says, I was just going to use a screen grab for one of my films. Oops. Yes, Katie. So you can use a screen grab from your film, but you're going to want to make sure it's in the center. On Canva, you, you can use things like frames. Put it in a frame, you know, but keep it in the center. Okay. Awesome. Brooklyn, I watch YouTube on TV all the time. I do too. Um, but in terms of where most people watch YouTube right now, at least the stats say is that they're watching it on mobile. Okay. And a very, very cool stat that I read today is that YouTube consumption. So, you know, how much people are watching YouTube is up 70%. So if you've ever thought about creating a channel um, or, you know, building your channel, maybe you've neglected it. Now is the time because people are watching. Okay. Um, it is Canva, C-A-N-V-A and Canva does not cost money. It is free. It is awesome. And you can make uh, thumbnails too. We're going to talk about that in a second. Okay. So you guys are gonna create that channel art, right? You're gonna keep it in the center. You're gonna make sure it shows us who you are, what your channel is all about, and when to expect content if you are one of these two people, the creators and the vloggers. Okay, you know what? Having this little piece of paper is gonna be very helpful. <laughs> I didn't even realize it. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add our links. Right here, you can see we can add social media links and our website to our header. And what's great is these are clickable. Okay, um, and we can add up to five links. I don't, doesn't mean you have to use all five links and I'll explain why. But what's great about adding these links to your header is that it's going to help you connect with your, your subscribers on multiple platforms. So here you're growing your YouTube audience and then you're also growing your Instagram now at the same time, okay? Now to change these, I have a second computer just so I can walk you guys through these things. Now, know when I'm walking you through these, just take notes and write what the timestamp is right now. And you can come back and watch the replay and actually do it, okay? You go in to customize your channel to add your links. 
And then you're going to hover over the right hand corner of top right corner of that channel art. And one of your choices is add links. OK, and like I said, you know, add up to five. Make sure you're leading with the one you want people to see the most. That will be the far left link, um, especially if you are using it as a hub for your career. If that casting director of that dream show, the producer, the people you're networking with, the people you're watching their lives clicked over to your channel, what would you want them to do first after they watch your reel, of course? Where do you want them to go? Is it your website? Is it your Instagram? OK, sometimes it's a lot stronger just to use two links than all five. OK, in fact, I only, uh, you know, I think I only use four and I'm everywhere on social media. OK, tell us where we want to go. All right. Cool. Thank you, Rianne. And yes, Canva has um, thing. It's it's basically free. But if you want to use um, certain like stock photos, things like that, they're a dollar each. So it's an amazing, amazing, amazing um, thing. And Patrick says, bet you put a, I'm putting my backstage on there. Yes. Add whatever links you want there. Um, that's a great idea. You know, where do you want people to go? And backstage is a perfect place for that. Okay, guys. All right. Let me change my screen here. All right. Okay, guys. So we did our profile photo. We did our header photo. We, our YouTube channel art. We then just added our links. And now I want you guys to organize your write and about section. Okay. Your about section, this is going to really come in handy. Yay. Um, is right here about, right? It's kind of, um, it's like your bio on YouTube, right? And what's great is it's searchable. Your about section will actually help your channel rank higher in search. So you're going to want to use keywords that help us key into what your channel's about. And we're going to talk about keywords in just a little bit when we get about, when we talk about more views and more subscribers. So hold on there. But just make sure that you fill out this about section. You tell us, tell potential subscribers why we should tune in, why we should subscribe. OK, very, very simple. Um, and you can just go into customized channel, go into your about and optimize that there. OK, awesome. OK, cool. So number four, we're optimizing that about section. Number five, I want you to choose a feature trailer or channel trailer. And that's going to depending on what it is, it depends on what you're doing. OK, um, what this is is if you go to my channel and you're not subscribed, you're going to see my ultimate social media checklist for actors here. It's a video, right? If you're not subscribed, that's the video I want you to see first on my channel. Okay. And it's going to auto play for new subscribers. So I want you to go and customize your channel today and choose what video you want us to see first. If it's a home channel, that should be your reel, right? Or if you do musical theater, maybe you don't have a reel. Um, maybe it's your most fantastic performance clip or your most recent per performance clip, something you're proud of, obviously, set that as your featured video or your channel trailer. Okay. If you're a creator, this obviously could be your your trailer for your content. It could be the first episode of your series, right? What do you want us to see first? Okay. Now, if you're a vlogger, you can actually create what they call a channel trailer. Um, I, for a while, had one up, but now that my channel has grown, um, I lead you to the video that I want you to see first. Um, but if you look up Heidi Dean channel trailer, you'll be able to see mine there. And I really explain my background, why I do what I do, why you should subscribe, right? If you're looking at um, a, a great example, actually, if you look up Carly Kloss model, um, her, I look up Carly Kloss uh, channel trailer. Hers is a little bit more produced, but it's a really great look at what, what's important to her, what, what she does. Um, it's a great view of that, okay? And a vlogger could totally take what she has in her, her channel trailer and make one of their own, okay? Um, so this really tells us we should subscribe the minute we get to the channel. Does that make sense, guys? And I see, is YouTube channel better than a personal website? Um, it's totally different than a personal website, okay? Totally, totally different. Um, all right, Gina, we'll get to that in a second when I talk about playlist. Okay. Awesome. Let me know if that makes sense in the chat. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. So now your store is looking good, right? We, let me take this back out. Your store is looking good, but yours is in color. <laughs> we have our channel art. We have our profile picture. We've chosen our featured um, video, our channel trailer, um, and we added our links. Those are some basic things you guys can do to, to set up shop. There are more, um, and if we have time, we'll cover them in the Q&A, but I want to get to views and subscribers because I know we have people with channels here. All right. 
Perfect, perfect. Okay, great. Awesome. I'll answer that. Somebody said, how do you create a future trip? Anthony, ask me that, that again at the end. Also, I saw another awesome question and I don't see the name anymore. And um, this was earlier. I saw somebody ask, I don't, you know, how, how would I create a vlog? What, um, you know, how would I know what topics to create? Whoever that was, remind me when we get to Q and A and I'll walk you through the questions to ask yourself that will help you brainstorm what your vlog topic could be. Okay. Cause really, it really has to come back to you, who you are. All right. All right, so we're going to move away from those first impressions now to ways to get more views and subscribers, right? So we set up shop. Our shop is looking kind of good right now, right? Now we want to get more folks in that store, your YouTube channel. All right, so the first thing we can do, let's start really passive ways to do this. The first thing we can do is we can add what's called a branding watermark to get viewers to subscribe. Now, if you've been to my channel or a lot of channels, um, my channel is youtube.com slash Heidi Dean, by the way. Um, so you don't just see the black and white version. But if you watch one of my videos and you look in the bottom, when you're watching the video, it would be the bottom right hand corner and you hover there, you'll see a little branding watermark. Now what this is, some people use a logo. Um, mine just says subscribe and it pops up right in the beginning of the video. And what's great about that is it allows any non-subscribers to become subscribers with one click. You can just click on that icon and subscribe to my channel. And it's it's not even subliminal, <laughs> it's right there. But like if I have a five minute video, it means it's there the whole time saying subscribe, 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 right? Um, these are super simple to create. You can create one in Canva um, and you just upload it in your channel settings, okay? And if you guys wanna know where that is in the Q and A, I got my second computer up, I can, Hop in and give you exact directions of where you upload that branding watermark. Okay. Canva is just for making graphics. Yeah, Canva just makes graphics and video. Like, uh, they'll, they'll make videos and GIFs, but it's not a video editor. I can give you some tools about how you can edit your videos in a little bit. Okay. Awesome. So we're going to add that branding watermark that's right over here um, on our video. Um, actually, I'm reversed, so it may be. <laughs> over there. Um, second thing we're going to do, we're going to create playlists of our content. Now, playlists are amazing for so many reasons, okay? Um, and different reasons depending on where you fall here, okay? So the reason why playlists are great is number one, they help us organize our content. Remember the store analogy? Like if we... If there was a store and the apples are next to the marshmallows and they're next to the gluten-free bread, how are we going to find anything, right? It's the same thing when someone lands on your channel. If you have all your videos just in one long line and they have to scroll through back into history to find them, well, guess what? They're not going to be able to find anything. So just like a store, just like a grocery store, how would you organize that store? You know, you'd group the fruits and vegetables together. You'd have the dairy section. Well, we can do the same thing with our YouTube channel. And that's what playlists allow us to do. They allow us to make playlists of groups of videos, okay? Um, they also get people to watch more videos. Watch time is king on YouTube. YouTube wants people to stay on YouTube and watch more videos. So if we send somebody to a playlist, so if I send you to my Instagram for actors playlist, right? You're going to start one video. I think about growing your following. And then instead, when that video is up, instead of YouTube suggesting a video to you that might be completely unrelated, I get to suggest the next video. And then after that one, I get to suggest the next video and I get to suggest the next video. So you're actually increasing your watch time on your channel, um, which is a good signal to the algorithm on YouTube that you're doing something right. And also increasing your watch time is going to help you monetize down the road. OK, so playlists help you um, organize your channel. They help you. Um, they help people watch more which helps you increase your watch time. But they also show up in search just like regular videos, which a lot of people don't realize. So this is really exciting because you can actually rank for a playlist on the front page of YouTube search, right? So my Instagram for actors playlist, my social media for actors playlist, and I think my marketing for actors playlist all rank on the first page of YouTube for those topics. So do my videos. So like now I have another chance to rank and search. And if someone clicks on that, they're obviously going to watch even more of my videos. Okay. So playlists are kind of a super savvy way to get more watch time, to show up in search and to just look a whole lot better. Let me know if that makes sense, guys. And you just go into your YouTube uh, studio 
which is the new YouTube studio. I don't know if you guys noticed, beginning of April, YouTube just redid the whole studio. It's so much easier to use than the old one. Okay, you can go in, you can organize those playlists. You can create and organize them. And when you create those playlists, if you actually want them to show up in search, make sure you optimize them. And we haven't talked about that yet, but everything we're gonna talk about in a second also applies to your playlist. So make sure the titles of your playlist, the descriptions of your playlist, um, all of those are keyword friendly, okay? So that they actually come up in search. And we're gonna talk about keywords in a second. Okay, Bella, this is rich info, it makes sense. Awesome, awesome, cool. Awesome. Yay. Perfect. So let me just tell you a couple different playlists we can make depending on which, which kind of channel you are before we move on to thumbnails, before we move on to keywords. Okay. So if you are a vlogger, right? Um, backstage, perfect example, my channel, perfect example. I'm going to group together my videos, Instagram for actors, marketing for actors. Um, I have one that's what to post for actors and it's all my videos that include something about what to post marketing for actors. A playlist that will have some social media, but it has email signatures. It has an IMDb uh, pro tutorial. It has uh, website tips for actors, right? So it's all these marketing tips for actors. Okay. So um, that's a good example. My channel, the way backstage groups their uh, channels by subject is great for vloggers. So just think uh, how you can, you know, how would you organize that grocery store for your vlog? Okay. It's going to help people find more content. If you have a home channel, so as an actor, like most of you probably do, um, obviously lead with your reel, right, as that channel trailer, um, but you can organize by medium. So say you've got a lot of performance clips up there. Maybe you have some commercials. Maybe you have TV. Maybe uh, you do musical theater and you have cabaret. Do you have enough to actually um, organize by medium, right? Film, TV, commercials, so we can quickly see the different things. Um, you may have your reel and performance clips, and maybe you are also vlogging. So maybe we separate those by playlist. So that's how to figure out these if you do more than one. Separate them out from by playlist, okay? Um, if you have a web series, where are you? Right there, creator. If you have a web series, some kind of content, um, you definitely need to use playlist, and you can do it by season. So season one is a playlist of your web series. Season two, season three right? Um, if you have a web series, you also can create something called a series playlist, which is very important. This is the official series playlist for your content. So this is you looking at YouTube and saying, I have a web series. I, you know, I've got this thing I created that should be watched in a certain order. And here is the order. This is going to help your video when it comes up in search that they're not going to suggest episodes out of order. They're going to suggest it to be watched in the order that you intended it. Okay, so that is called a series playlist, and it's very good if you are a creator and have some sort of web series. Let me know if that makes sense, especially if you have a web series and you are a creator. Perfect. Having another sip of coffee. Hmm. All right. Okay, so that is creating playlists, right? So we're adding that branding watermark to get more subscribers. We're creating playlists, which is our first impression. It helps us show up in search. Um, it gets people to watch more. So actually playlists are just an amazing thing on our channel to really, uh, really help us make an impact um, on YouTube. The next thing we can do is we can create eye-catching thumbnails. Okay. If you've ever seen a video on YouTube, if you've ever looked in search, there's, um, there's a little thumbnail, right? It's like a little mini movie poster for that video, right? Its only job is to get people to watch, right? So you can know how to show up in search, but it won't matter if your thumbnail is not good, right? <laughs> so um, is that coffee mug large enough? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> it's like three cups of coffee. Um, hey, I gotta go live for like an hour. I need some coffee. Um, so we're creating that thumbnail, guys. Um, if your thumbnail's boring, no one's going to click on it, right? Even if your content's good, even if you're showing up up in search. Now, the good news is you don't have to be a designer to create an eye-catching thumbnail. You can um, use Canva, canva.com. This is our um, free resource today, right? Canva.com. So they actually have a template for thumbnails. So even if you're not a designer, what I'd suggest if you're not a designer is use one of their templates that they have. Change the font, change the colors, change the picture, obviously. Um, but, and actually you might leave the font if you're not a designer. Uh, they're already giving you the tools to make it look good and to really show up 
in search. Okay. Awesome. Um, thumbnails. And you just do it. You go right into Canva and you go to create a design and thumbnails will be one of the choices. Okay. Um, and you choose one. What I suggest if you're doing different types of playlists, especially if you're a vlogger, um, you may have different types of videos. So I know that actors that uh, vlog about, um, I have a, actually a client who is vlog, that vlogged about um, her gluten-free journey. Uh, when she found out she had celiac disease. So she had all sorts of different videos on her channel. So she had videos that might have been um, a recipe. She had a video that might be um, an interview with someone else. She had a video that um, was a little bit more vlog style about funny restaurant things. So she made sure that her thumbnails for each of them look slightly different so that when you went to her channel, you would see those different types of thumbnails. Backstage is a great example of this, actually. It all is the same branding. It looks great, but their different playlists are um, uh, look slightly different. The thumbnails do. Okay. Awesome. What was that? You need uh, you need one thousand subscribers to get ads put on YouTube. Well, no, actually, that has changed. You need one thousand subscribers to monetize and four thousand watch hours not watch minutes, watch hours in the past 12 months. That was a big change this last year. So just know when you're starting your channel, your goal is not to monetize right away because you have to get those views up. It's why playlists, which is why your structure of your videos is so important. I mean, we can talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so we're creating that, that eye-catching thumbnail so we get more views, so we show up in search. Okay, guys? Um, a little pro tip with something I do as, I mean, like I said, I am a educational vlogger um, and something a lot of my clients do that have web series. They actually shoot the thumbnail first. So when you're actually shooting your content, think about something that might be suspenseful, something that might be funny and actually have your actors stage the thumbnail. You're probably gonna get a lot better result than, um, than a screenshot especially if there's a lot of uh, motion, but also, especially if you're a vlogger, I always shoot my thumbnail before I shoot my video. And the only reason why I do it before and not after is I um, batch create videos. So when I create videos, I might be shooting three or four in a day. And if I do the thumbnail last, I'll probably forget. So I sit down to shoot a video and I do my thumbnail first. I know like the spirit of the video in my life. Yes, you're learning social media. So I do my thumbnail. Um, I may be pointing at the title, but I stage it ahead of time, right? And I just let the camera roll. And I also use this to create, I make, if you follow me on Twitter at Marketing for Actor, um, you'll see for my YouTube videos, I make quirky little GIFs and they get really good engagement. Um, they get shared a lot. And those are for my YouTube videos. I stage those before my video. So a pro tip with your thumbnails um, is to actually stage them before your video, especially if you're a vlogger. Okay. Um, all right. Two. Uh, somebody said, I can't do that right away. There are a lot of features on YouTube that you can't do right away, but all you have to do is go into your settings and go into advanced settings and there's a verification process. You can't go live um, if you don't verify your channel because I want to know you're a real person. You can't go live. You can't make videos more than 15 minutes. You can't do thumbnails. You can't do end screens if you don't verify your channel. That's all right in um, in your YouTube channel. Okay, guys? Um, so and I'll, I'll, in Q&A, I can walk you through where all that is, but you actually have to verify your channel. Um, it's just a quick phone verification, okay? They just wanna make sure that you're like a real human, <laughs> okay? And yes, this is being recorded um, after that you can watch it when you're when it's over, actor 0430. We need to get you a name <laughs> and a profile photo. <laughs> okay, Bella, don't be overwhelmed because um, there's actually even more things to create a YouTube channel, with things I do with my online classes for actors, my YouTube class and my clients. It's work to create an online to create a YouTube channel. Um, and it's a lot easier when you can actually see my screen. I could show you everything. And if you're, where we're, what we're talking about right now is really if you have a channel. Obviously, you're, if you don't have videos, you're not creating playlists, right? If you, so, so that's where we are right now, okay? We'll be doing Q&A in just a second. And then, um, and then you can ask me some beginner's questions, okay? All right, so the next thing we can do to get more subscribers is we can cross promote our channel using what's called a subscription link. And that is for anybody, right? So whenever I share just my channel, not like an individual video, I share what's called a subscription link. See, let me see if I can cut and paste this. It may not, it may not work. I'm gonna be all blow up this 
chat since Katie's also in chat, but we'll see. So this is a subscription rank. And Katie, feel free to put backstage ones in there too. Um, what it is, is it's your YouTube channel's link. And you, you might not be able to customize your link yet because you don't have enough subscribers. That's cool. But it's still your link from up in the browser when you look at your channel. And then I'm going to have to read this because it's so long. So it's, you know, youtube.com slash Heidi Dean. That's my channel, right? And then what you put is question mark sub underscore confirmation equals one period. Okay. Um, and I'll, I'll, when I'm done here, I'll hop and put that in the, just that end part. I'll put it in the, the comments because it seems to be cutting it off <laughs> in the chat. But what that does is when you share that link, it is so super cool. Cause if you click on it, um, you, you share that link and a pop-up comes up, right? Asking viewers to subscribe. So that might be the link you share on your website for YouTube, right? That's one. And when someone lands on your channel, no matter which one it is, they're, they're like, hey, do you want to subscribe to this channel? That means every view, every time someone goes on your channel could actually end up being a subscriber. It's not likely that it will be every time, but you're you're urging people to hit that subscribe button. Sometimes it takes a little nudge. Okay? Okay, perfect. So just know that's how you create it, guys. It's your link. And then it's the end part of that link, which I think got caught off on the chat. But it is that question mark, sub, underscore confirmation equals one period. And you just put that right after your link. And then you're like, hey guys, subscribe every time. Okay, you can share it on social media. It's really, really um, a good thing to do. And thank you, Katie, for getting rid of that nasty, nasty person in the chat. Um, <laughs> welcome to live. <laughs> um, so number five, okay. Number five, which is the last thing we'll talk about. Um, this is number five of views and subscribers. And then we'll move into Q&A. Um, you need to use keyword rich titles, descriptions, and tags. And this is really, you got to do all the stuff that we talked about um, to optimize your channel, to, to urge people to subscribe in passive ways and really forward ways like the subscription link we just talked about. But keywords are really the key to showing up in search, but not just using them, knowing how to use them. Okay. Um, the first thing is when you create a video, guys, I'm going to bring it back a little basic in case you guys don't have a channel um, or don't really use YouTube much. Um, when you create a video, and this is really going to apply more for these people than if it's a home. Um, obviously, if it's a home, you're going to use your name. You're going to use the, the actors or maybe the projects you're on um, to help people key into what it is. But really, we're really looking at vloggers and creators right now. Okay. So the keywords that you're using in your tags, your uh, your your titles of your video in the description of your video because you get a description every time you do a video and the tags which are little keywords that you get to put on every single video um, they need to be pretty close to the exact words your viewers would type into search to find your video so after you've created that video whether it's a vlog or your web series what would someone type into search to find them okay um, and we're gonna use these keywords in the title. We're gonna use these keywords in the description. We're gonna use these in the tags. And what's really super important when you start out with a channel, when you don't have subscribers, when you don't have views, is that you don't use just super popular tags. Now, if you guys joined me for the Instagram tips for actors a couple weeks ago, um, we were talking about um, hashtags and actually how you properly use hashtags on Instagram with kind of not using all the super popular ones is the same as using tags um, and using keywords on YouTube when you're just starting out, okay? You see, a lot of actors, they try to create channels about their journey as an actor, and that's great. But do you know how competitive that channel is? You're competing against backstage. I know you're a vlog, but you're competing against backstage, variety. You're, you're competing against Will Smith. You're competing against every casting director, director, producer, me, anybody out there that has something about acting right? It's a very competitive field. And unless you know how to choose your keywords, you're not going to be ranking right on the front page. Okay. So I want you to think about something called a long tail keyword. So instead of just making your video about like, oh, my acting journey, well, and acting is your keyword. Do you know how many videos are made with the, t the tag acting and the keyword acting? A gazillion, right? Someone's saying you're talking SEO. Yes. Key, this is keywords for YouTube. Uh, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world, right behind Google, right? And guess what? YouTube videos rank on Google. 
So yes, it is all about um, SEO. Okay. Um, but you really got to think long tail keywords. So instead of, let me use an example. I have a client that is an actor, but a photographer. Instead of just like teaching photography tips, which is very competitive, they're teaching how to take better photos with your iPhone, right? Which still actually has competition. So already they're niching down a little bit. So now instead of photography tips, it's iPhone photography tips. So, right, we started with that keyword, you know, photography. That's a very competitive keyword tag. Um, and now we're saying iPhone photography. That's a longer tail keyword. iPhone photography tips. That's a better uh, keyword for this person to rank for. Why? Because people are still searching for it. There is still thousands of people searching for this every month, but there's less competition. Okay. So when you're creating, I can do a whole class on keywords. <laughs> so when you're choosing these keywords, guys, um, make sure you're using these longer tail keywords. Okay. Um, and so YouTube says use words often misspelled not to use like hashtags when uploading a video. Um, yeah, I mean, you can use if, if something is something, uh, a keyword that you would put on your video could be commonly misspelled. Yeah, but there's a research process with this. You need to go into search. You need to use certain tools. I use a tool like TubeBuddy. I use keywords everywhere. These are, if you guys have a channel, these are for more of the advanced people, um, you can go in and you can search search volume. So you could find out which misspellings are going to be better for your channel to rank for. Okay. Um, um, you can actually use hashtags. Um, I use them in my description because now we can have hashtags on our videos. Um, I don't think it's quite caught on that people are actually searching hashtags as much on um, on YouTube, but um, and it really depends what that hashtag is. Okay. Yeah, the first three hashtags in your description show up right above the title. Yeah. So which tool, Marlene Vincent? Oh, the tools I use um, and I teach in my classes are um, uh, Keywords Everywhere. It's actually a Chrome browser extension and it helps give you the search results for different keywords. And then I use something called TubeBuddy and it not only tells me, um, I can look up any keyword and it's gonna tell me like search volume, is that gonna be good? It will also tell me like a weighted result. If you, if you pay, it's actually a free tool, but if you use the, the paid version, it will tell me if it's actually good for my channel. Pretty awesome, right? So by using these, using these tags, that these keywords that people are still searching for, um, a lot of people are still searching for it, but they have less competition. I'm actually ranking on page one. And I mean, I'm as the general, you guys, it gives you an opportunity to opportunity to actually rank, right? And maybe we'll do another live that's just about keywords for people that have channels. Um, Cause I don't wanna talk too much about it cause I think it's going to confuse people. If you have a channel and have a keyword question, let me know in the Q and A and I will um, walk you through it. Um, so when you're doing your titles, when you're doing your descriptions, when you're doing your tags on your videos, guys, um, think long tail keywords. Okay. Think a little bit less competition. Okay. And also know, um, when you're thinking titles, only the first 45 characters of your title are actually viewable in search. So try to put your keywords toward the front because not only do they help you show up in search, but they help us key into what the video is about. All right. Okay. Um, Brooklyn, I know this is going to sound lame, but do actors really need a YouTube channel? It's not lame at all. In fact, I think the advice that's out there that like all actors need to have a YouTube channel and need to create content, that is not true. Every actor, I mean, unless maybe you're a voice actor and you don't do anything on video, um, needs a house, a home for their video content. Now that could be Vimeo, right? Um, or I guess you could house it on your website, but even most websites you need to have, you know, it needs to be uploaded to Vimeo or YouTube. Right. So every actor needs a home base for their reel, for their performance clips. Right. But does every actor need to be on YouTube? No, that's the real answer. Right. But you do need a place for your video content. And that may be YouTube. That might be Vimeo. But no, not every actor needs to be a vlogger. Not every actor needs to be a creator. Nope. That's actually a lot of advice out there right now. And I just don't I just there's a lot of other things you could be spending your time on. You know, don't don't create a vlog or um, a web series if that's just not in your heart. It's a lot of work. Okay. Um, all right. So we covered a lot. <laughs> um, we covered, um, I think we've talked, covered five things to really set up shop, you know, to make sure everything looks good, um, on your channel. And then we talked about five things, um, to get more views and subscribers. Now there's more than that. There's end cards and all sorts of things we can do to our videos, um, and, um, analytics and, but, 
I'll see if we can cover some of that in our Q&A right now. Um, let me hop into chat. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Brooklyn, I mean, I'm thinking about all the actors who got roles on Game of Thrones without a channel. I'm sure it helps. A YouTube channel is not going to, I mean, a YouTube channel can help you build your brand um, and can help you get cast. But it's not like they're, they're not, when you're talking about social media that they're looking up to help you get cast, we're talking Instagram, we're talking Twitter, we're talking about numbers. Now, if you have a channel with subscribers, that can help you. But nobody in the industry is like, oh, they don't have a YouTube channel. They're not an actor. So no, but you need a place to, ha to house your content. Okay. Um, now, while the questions come in, I want to answer, somebody had a question in the beginning. It was so good about, you know, I want to create a channel, but what do I create it about? Because really, guys, you can create your channel about your acting journey. But like I said, that is a very competitive field. And if you're going to do that, you want to get very specific with your keywords and who your audience is for that. Because your acting journey is not going to apply to everybody, right? Um, your acting journey might not apply to someone that's a Broadway actor or somebody further along. So you got to get very specific if you are going to do your journey as an actor, what your uh, mission is about and who your audience is. Okay. But when you're trying to decide, um, what your vlog topic might be, um, it all has to come back to you. So let me walk you guys because there are a couple questions I do, um, with my clients and in my YouTube class. Um, um, it's very similar to the, when I did the what to post, I asked, asked you guys a bunch of questions. Some of these are very similar. So you need to ask yourself, um, you know, do you have any unique qualities, um, unique expertise, uh, unique talents? Okay. Some of these can be outside of acting. Okay. You don't actually have to vlog about your acting career. Um, what or who inspires you? Um, who are your heroes? I've had, you know, I've known people that have created whole channels about their comedian heroes and they're also comics. Okay. Um, what are you doing when you feel most alive? Ask yourself that if you're creating a vlog. Do you, is it family time? Is it hiking, cooking, traveling? That's going to lead you right to a vlog topic there. And then you're creating videos about something that's important to you. Okay. Um, what do you do in your free time? What do you do when you're not acting? TV shows, music, books, hobbies. That might lead you to a vlog topic. Okay. Um, and one that goes a little deeper, but like, what's the toughest challenge that you faced or you're still facing? Okay. Um, do you have a story that can help somebody find success, help somebody find peace, help somebody find joy? And you can make your whole channel about that. Okay. So hopefully, and I wish I had the name of it, uh, the name of the person that uh, asked that earlier, if you're trying to create a channel, um, think about those questions. Okay. All right. Oh, like, let me go back to chat. We answered one question. Woohoo. Uh, example of a long tail keyword. It's exactly the, uh, the example I, um, uh, said earlier, but I'll use myself as an example. Um, I could use the keyword social media, but that is really broad and a gazillion people search for social media. And guess what? They're not even all my audience, which is actors. You know, social media could be anybody. It could be moms that want to protect their kids. It could be marketers. It could be photographers, right? So if I just started with the, the keyword social media, it's really competitive, hard to rank for, and not even specific to my content. To make it a long tail keyword, social media for actors, social media for acting. Even thinking about the sentences, like I said, the people are going to put into chat. Um, do actors need social media? Long tail keyword. People type that into uh, chat and I rank for it. So think about that when you're creating your titles. Okay. It's the same example as like instead of photography or photography tips, uh, my client that does iPhone photography tips. So instead of a single word or single couple words, we're adding more words to make it more specific, um, still searchable, but less competitive. Okay. All right. Let's, let's see. Okay. Um, do I need to worry about subscribers hashtags if I'm in that first 90% using YouTube is just a home for my reel and clips? If not, why use YouTube at all when my reel is already on backstage? Good question. But um, no, you don't. If you are just, this is actually a big myth too. A lot of actors, I look at their channel. They're like, how do we get more subscribers? And I'm like, well, you just have your reel and some performance clips. If you're creating a home, you're not necessarily going to get lots of subscribers. And In fact, a lot of that content you don't even own. Right. So you're not really going to create a fan base, just having a home base, but you do need to clean it up. And that's why everything we talked about in the beginning about making it look good, because that will affect your first impression is so important. OK, because um, people are looking you up on YouTube. Um, here's an example. My husband's a Broadway performer. A couple of years ago, he was doing a um, a big concert and the 
uh, soprano like that he usually performs with was not available. So he had to find someone new. And he reached out to some of his uh, the musical directors on Broadway that he knew and was like, can you give me some, you know, it has to be a Broadway performer soprano. They have to, that that's the qualification. So he got a long list. He went and looked these people up on YouTube and he's like, I can't believe they'd have this clip on here. I can't, you know, this, and this YouTube channel looks terrible. It was their first impression. And this job paid a lot of money and all these people actually lost the job because their YouTube channel did not look good. So that's just an example beyond the basic, like casting directors, looking at you directors, like people are looking you up because people are referring you. Um, and YouTube might be one of those spots. So make sure John that you do optimize your channel. Okay. Um, um, and you can have your reel on backstage, but just know that not, you know, although people do look up, look you up on backstage, especially people that are um, casting the projects on backstage, um, you do need to have your reel somewhere else for people to be able to access. Okay. All right. I think they're mowing the lawn again, which happened last time. <laughs> it's a nice day. People are trying to get out. All right. Let's see. Lots of questions. Um, Mark, so say you found good long tail keywords. How do you check the competitiveness of them? You go right to search, but that's where TubeBuddy and Keywords Everywhere are helpful, okay? Um, they will show you the competitiveness, okay? Um, perfect. Uh, and that's the stuff I do with my clients. We really set up like a plan of like, okay, what kind of keywords are we gonna use? What are you gonna actually rank for, okay? Um, let's see, oh, it's going very fast. Um, can you create a home channel with different themes so you can have different types of viewers? Um, you mean for your career? Uh, can you be a little bit more specific, Gina? Because so you can have different types of viewers. Um, if it's different viewers in the industry, that's cool. I'd say put them in playlist, you know, because I, you know, we have multi artists. Maybe you're a comedian and you're an actor. So maybe you have a comedy playlist and you have a playlist with your acting stuff. So that when somebody lands there, they know, like, if they're looking you up as a comedian, they go, they're going to go straight to probably the comedy stuff. Okay. Um, okay. No spaces. Where am I? Editing, you can use iMovie. I don't even know where that came from, but yes, you can, um, you can use uh, iMovie. OK, um, in fact, like in my class, I actually just created a video that shows you how I edit all my videos, how I shoot them. And up until February, guys, even for my channel, I edited all my movie, all my videos in iMovie. Um, you don't now I have an editor, but you to start a YouTube channel, you don't need fancy equipment. Most people are creating videos on their phone. Um, I used an old iPad for a while when I started my channel. Um, you don't need a fancy camera. You need good content, right? Good content trumps. Uh, like expensive um equipment all the time now what is important on um i'm trying to get my microphone for you guys here and um, what is important is as your um as your channel grows um your equipment should evolve a little bit and you need good lighting you need good sound okay so you might invest in some of the same equipment that you're using for self tapes i have a ring light because my office is small so maybe use a ring light for your tapes um i use this road microphone right um and i use it for all my videos I have an extender on it too when I'm shooting, if I'm shooting outside. Um, it's really important for good sound. I don't use it for my lives, but I use it for my videos. So as your channel grows, you're gonna want to make sure your sound sounds good and your lighting sounds good, but um, you really, we can, we're in such a great age where we can actually shoot things on our phone and videos. Pretty awesome, right? Okay, let's see. <laughs> if you have a blog, should you cover the same topics or come up with new ones? Ooh, this is a... A big topic, but a good one. What I actually suggest if you have a vlog is you come up with different what I call content categories. Um, it's like the, the gluten-free vlog I talked about earlier. She has different content categories. And what she had, let me see if I can break this down really fast. So um, Jen, what she has is she her, her whole uh, concept of her channel is, you know, for gluten-free living, but she has different types of content. So she did that interview series. What, uh, one day, one time a month, she would also um, uh, highlight a book, right? That might help you with gluten-free living. There was another one where it was her vlogging about funny restaurant experiences, living gluten-free, which if you've ever been gluten-free, my husband is actually celiac as well. Uh, going to a restaurant is sometimes crazy. Um, so she has these different categories. And what's great is she, I can't remember the fourth category she came up with, but it made, made it really easy for her to schedule out her videos because the first week of the month, she would do the recipe. The second week, she'd do the book, um, the gluten-free book. The third one, she'd interview somebody who was also um, big in the YouTube space. So guess what? That's a collaboration. 
I don't remember what the fourth topic was, but that was week four. And then every once in a while, we know a month ends up having five days. Guess what? She would go right to her subscribers and she would do Q&A or she, she has started to go live. Okay. And going live like this, um, although it's not good for my, great for my channel, um, it's good for my channel for exposure, but for backstage right now, they're getting a lot of watch time by going live. So if you're trying to monetize, if you're trying to get your views up, um, utilizing live features on YouTube, especially once you get so, you know, a couple of subscribers, um, so, uh, so you can invite people to go live, that's gonna get your watch time up and you're gonna be able to monetize faster, okay? Was that a lapel road? Yeah, it's a lavalier road mic. Uh, uh, road mic. Mm -hmm. That one's a little, I mean, that one is like probably a $90 mic. There are cheaper versions. I actually have one, another one that I use for interviews that's a double that you can use as a single and it's much cheaper. I think it's like $25 or something. So there's all different options, but as your channel grows, you're gonna wanna upgrade lighting, upgrade um, sound, because that's the most important thing on your video. Um, let's see. Okay, I see lots of great uh, suggestions of um, ring lights and all that, and that's great, guys. Thanks for helping everybody out. Um, is it a Rode mic USB? Uh, no, it's, it goes right into my phone, actually. It's just like a headphone jack. In fact, I have to, because I have an iPhone 10, I have to use the, the, the headphone jack, the adapter. All right. Do you film on a phone and how do you transfer to iMovie? Would you suggest AirDrop? Yes. Um, and like I said, most of, most of my videos now, I film on a phone. I film on the iPhone 10 and I just AirDrop them. Exactly. I AirDrop them and then I put them in Dropbox because I have an editor now. So then after I do B-roll for them, because mine's educational, I have to do the B-roll. They do all my editing for me. Okay. Um, should you upload your reel to YouTube or web page? I actually suggest, Alexis, you do both because like, depending on what type of website you have, you probably actually have to have it on some kind of Vimeo or YouTube. So upload it to YouTube, make it your featured, you know, your channel trailer. So it's the first thing we see if we land on your channel. Um, and then you can use the embed code <laughs> um, or the share link and then put it on your website. But it should be on your website too, if you have it. It's not bad to have it both places. Okay. How should you share your video from YouTube on other social networks? Oh, that is a whole, we could do a whole, Katie, we'll do another one on that one. <laughs> um, if you look at my um, Twitter and my Instagram marketing for actors on, uh, Instagram marketing for actor on Twitter, uh, you'll see a bunch of different examples of teasers. So when I record my YouTube video, now I'm a vlogger, um, after I'm done with my video, I actually take the beginning of my video and I make a teaser. I take the, just the intro. So like, hey guys, we're learning 10 YouTube tips today that it's gonna help you get more views and subscribers. Let's do this. That would be the intro, right? And then I then I edit it. I just fade it right into a, uh, a picture that I make on Canva that says, hey guys, it's on my YouTube channel. And I just keep the music from the video under it. And now I've got this really fast 15 second teaser that I can upload to Instagram. Um, I use a tool called Subtitle. Um, this is for Anthony asking how to, share. I use a tool called Subtitle, which actually I can take that same teaser and add captions and a headline and share that. It's um, They're very eye-catching and they get shared a lot. I also create GIFs for my YouTube channel. Um, and if you go to my Twitter, you'll see those in action and they get really good engagement. And I create those on um, Giphy, Jiffy, however you want to say it. <laughs> okay. Um, not selfie way, Danielle. The camera's better on the other side. Don't do selfie way, okay? I mean, unless, unless of course, I take that back, unless you are vlogging like this. I have a gimbal too, which I can't get to, it's on the other side. A gimbal is what you can put your phone in and it tracks you and it also stabilizes your phone. So if you're vlogging a lot and you're walking, then you might need a gimbal. And um, for a lot of those features, you actually are using the selfie camera, okay? Um, all right, let me know if that makes sense, guys. I have just about a minute left, but I'll answer one more question. Um, uh, I have vlogs of me sitting in front of the phone talking about the steps it took to chase my dreams and goals, but then I started to do scenes from movies. Would you make those two different playlists? Yeah, yeah, make them make them different playlists. And don't don't be afraid to audit your stuff, guys. Um, audit your channel. The, the videos that you created last year about your goals and dreams might not be appropriate for your channel now right? Like think about who's going to your channel if it's the home. So you may every once in a while want to take down old videos, you know, that don't reflect who you are right now. Okay. They are really cutting that grass. I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> um, Robos, um, want to add a you. 
uh, Anthony's asking, if you're on Facebook and want to add the YouTube link, where can you find that YouTube link for your video? It's just the share button under your video. So look at your video and hit share and um, that will share your video. Or you could do the subscription one if you're just sharing your channel, the one I gave you guys earlier. I just saw a really good question and it moved. My boys are both actors, but want to do videos about experiments, challenges, and things like that. Which category would they fit into best? They're pretty much a vlogger. Um, uh, look up Pierce's World is a good example of that. Um, I think it's Pierce's World. Um, he does like slime experiments um, and he's a little, maybe, how old is Pierce now? 12, 13. But when he started, he was much, he was younger and he's doing slime experiments and, um, and that'll be a good thing for you to look at. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Marlene Vincent. And this is my last question today, guys. Um, for, um, but if I didn't answer your question, find me on social media. I will answer it. Marketing for actors. Um, Marlene, for actors using it just for home, is there a preference between YouTube and Vimeo? It's really a personal uh, preference. Um, I mean, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. So I kind of look at it and go, well, why not set up a YouTube channel and have your reel there um, and at least use keywords where if someone Googles you or if someone looks your name up on YouTube, you'll actually show up, right? Um, but it's really up to you. Um, totally up to you. I use Vimeo. I, I use YouTube for different reasons. Okay. Oh, it is Zubtitle. Z-U-B-T-I-T-L-E. I love tools. If you guys have uh, gone live with me before, I love tools. So that is it for today, guys. Um, like I said, we covered a lot. Um, watch the replay when we're done here. Um, and um, look at the backstage channel. Look at my channel. You're going to see a lot of those elements, the watermark, the header, the playlist. You're going to see all of them in action. And yeah, I will be back not next week, but the week after. And we're going to be talking about what social network should an actor be on. Uh, and we're going to break down the differences between the networks and find out where you should play. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I will see you on my YouTube channel. I will see you on social. Okay, bye, guys. Thank you.